along with Leo Bud Welch. We're here with Jack Pearly talking about the blues. I don't know what you gonna do. I don't know what you gonna do. Again, uh, by me secretly recording Leo performing at my 50th uh, birthday party and getting that recording into the hands of Big League of Mass Records. <laughs> I knew somewhere down the line there'd be somebody to help you. And he and he brought the joy of my heart to me by getting me into the record company where we could record and everything. So this Pat Possum recording was called the Big League of Mess with Bruce Watson in Water Valley, Mississippi. And so in the last two years we have been doing great. We've been for a year, I might say. Not all around the world yet, but I tell the people. This time another year, I hope to be the one all the way around the world. Playing the blues, gospel, hillbilly, I call it, whatever. I, I play a little bit of it all. Some people call them down there, pop off so couldn't timber. I did that about 35 years. And so the gospel and the blues is almost the same because they were praying to Jesus Christ when you're talking about the gospel. But the gospel ain't nothing but about somebody's life, like they're talking about Jesus, the life of Jesus Christ. And that's where the blues are. You can have a girlfriend, y'all be on bad terms, she be on twitching, so. That's the blue. And so I've heard it said that you dip snuff and ain't got no more snuff to dip. No money to buy none. That's the blue. Smoke cigarettes, out of cigarettes, no money to buy no more. That's the blue. Anything could be the blue, and that's, that's what makes you out of blue. You, you'll be feeling sad and low. Sad and out. You think the world know nothing about you, but you just have to keep your head lifted high and keep on keeping on what you're doing. Hmm, dig it. You know, Jack, uh, to add to that, I think you can sum this whole thing up about gospel and blues and by just simply saying blues is about singing about your relationship with human beings. Yeah. And gospel is a, you're singing about your relationship with a deity. It's, it's just singing. It's just music. Music is either good or it's bad. There's no, there's no difference. People try to pigeonhole music at the different genres based on what color the artist is and where they come from you know and to me music cross all boundaries you got different people saying what we call blues what we call pop what you call whatever is the people are singing about what's going on with them or what they witness going on with other people or where they hope to go after they pass through this world it's just music Tonight, you are going to embark on a musical journey to a place in America that many people thought no longer existed. 
And we're here to bring that to you. We don't know what anybody else come to do, but we come to sing our song. And if you would join me with one of these big New York welcomes to the Forever Young, Mr. Leo Bud I think it's important for world history that the world knows that, that this type of music uh, was born out of conditions that uh, predominantly black people were subjected to. The black people wasn't the only people were subjected to the conditions that produced artists like Leo Bud Wells, who sings and performs the way he does. But Leo is one exceptional human being who happened to be black. I'm black and I can't sing and lick, can't play like he can. Well, on the farm, see, we, we go to the field quickly to get light enough to see how to start plowing. And then we quit in the evening when it get dark enough that we couldn't see, we'd quit. Go out for supper, when we go out for supper. I don't know how to play guitar pretty good, and so after I eat supper, I get my guitar and sit out on the porch so inside of my room and play guitar. And people used to come to my house, and I just sit out and play for them to listen to the music. And so that'll get you into the blues and gospel. I, my family always went to church all the time. They always encouraged me to always go to church. So I've been a church goer and a blues singer all my life. And so going to church, the blues means to me in my heart, as much as me, it's two gospel songs. Dude. Because, you know, everybody say they're going to heaven, they ain't going there. But, you know, the blues is really my style of music. Most gospel come off the, off the evaporation of the stars of the blues. I call it these old school blues. Mm -hmm. See, I was born in 1932. The 22nd day of March, my birthday, I had my 83rd birthday. And I've been playing guitar about 70 years, like blue harmonica. I can play bass guitar, I can play drum. But I never did get chance so we didn't have no saxophone back in those days. We blew no saxophone nothing but that. And all that, it's just all added together. You are listening to good gospel music and good blues music. And like the pastor says, he don't prefer no blues, but he, he ain't for 52 years. He really don't know what the blues is all about. Mm. Anybody can understand what the blues is about, then they know about the blues. You know, Jack, I think to add to that, I've been working closely with Leo for the last two and a half, two and a half years, and I listen to him and I take things in. Uh, the way Leo was brought up, it was a simple light. You know, light with, in a house with electricity just simply used for burn lights. Yeah. Okay. Blemish. And he, he never lived more than 25 miles from the place that he was born, from his place of birth. He never lived more than 25 miles. Right. So when he would hear people singing, usually it was in person, or he would hear it on the radio. And the radio wasn't turned on every day, all day, just certain times of the week. Okay. So you won't find these great influences on his music because his music is done the way it was done when the music was in his infancy. He yeah. didn't get exposed to Chicago, Detroit, New York. He stayed there on the farm and the way he heard the music was the, uh, when the music was young. You know, so he didn't learn all this and didn't hear all this music after it was urbanized. When he listened to some of the music that Muddy done in Chicago after he left. Leo identifies that music as being too fast, that it's being played too fast. Yeah, somebody and, is. and I think that was an attempt by those guys to take the blues and get it closer uh, to rock and roll or whatever they was, uh, whatever they had to do to keep the blues from being squashed because people yeah. was trying to stomp out the blues, you know, with rock and rolls and soul and pop and whatever. Oh, I work five, five long years for one woman. 
You know, I like that term, industry standard. Industry standard is, I think, is somebody's way of saying, uh, you're gonna do it my way and not your way. But here's the deal. I think the music transitioned the way it did so that it could, so they could survive. Because who spends the money? Who is supporting these artists that were doing the blues? You know, you we go to shows and the attendance is 97, 98 percent people that don't look like us. They're not black people that are supporting the music financially. Now, they'll dance to it and claim it, but you gotta put your money where your mouth is yeah. to, to keep this music alive. So, Leo does his music the way he does it, and the first thing I share with him, Leo, you just need your audience. I just need to get you in front of your audience. And, and here at home, you know, sad to say, but this is not your audience. That's right. It's a song where I had to say, if I know if I keep on singing, somebody would hear me. And so now, they hear me all over the world, in magazines, preaching in magazines, everything, in the last two, almost a half year it's been said three minutes ago. So I'm just enjoying. I love what I'm doing and I'm enjoying what I'm doing. We come here to you from Mississippi to bring some true blues to the Big Apple. This lovely lady to my right rear is from Clarksdale, Mississippi. I refer to her as the queen of the beat with two drum sticks. Give it up for Miss Dixie Street. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, Leo would uh, he would be happy if, you know, before he leave this world, he could leave it with the, uh, knowing that someone that looks like him is going to carry on the music that he loves. And it, I think it's equally important that that the music continues regardless of whether or not the person looks like Leo. But, you know, the, the it, it's so far behind, you know. you. There isn't anybody else alive that does the music the way Leo does it. Nobody. There isn't anybody his age. <laughs> It ain't too many to do it like I do. I always tell the people I do it to Leo and Buddy Westway. If I'm gonna get out there and imitate B.B. King, Muddy Waller, and Howlin' Wolf and all of them, of course I mix it up some like they do, but I put the Leo Bud West sets in there. And that's what making the blues, that's what I'll make the blues stay alive. Cause we don't want the blues to die. We wanna keep them alive as long as the we were saying, I hope the blues always be around. Yeah, you have to trust it and get in time, no matter how long it takes. Yeah, there is an out of there. She wants to cut out on me. Got it? Cut it, act up. Oh, I just, it, 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 it's in my heart, and I just, when I get to playing, it looks like it lifts me up, you know, now. I can't sit there, I have to stand up. I used to sit. Stand up and play all the time, but when I got old. I have to sit down. But when that spirit hit me, I know it's something lifts me up. And I guess it's all I can say. It had to be the hands of the Lord, cause I can get up there and can't dance long, dance around like I used to when I was real young. And so I just the spirit hit me. I'm getting up moving. I can't sit there and be still. I just have to move around. Sitting in the chair, I feel me rock and fall out. <laughs>
I didn't think that I would uh, grow as at the pace that I have in the business, you know, coming into this, not knowing anything about music, not in, knowing anything about the music business. I didn't think I would be able to keep pace, uh, but I've met a fact I've led the way. Yeah. The, the message that I want to leave with the young musicians is that find a way, take the time out to not only perfect your part of your craft, your music, but to expand your knowledge regarding the whole picture, sound engineering, speaker placement, not just perfecting yourself as a guitarist or a vocalist, but you need to be well informed about the whole business, the, the cables, the mics, uh, the speakers, uh, what the sound engineering is doing out there for you. Because the musician can't be two places at once. The musician may sound great on stage and sound like crap out in the house because the musician is not concerned enough about what sound is going out to his or her audience. So become informed about your business all the way around. It's called show business, not just show. And what I'd like to leave with the audience is that if you get an opportunity to see a living link to the way music was done 70 years ago, don't pass up the opportunity. Go out and, 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 and witness that. Well, the message I'd like to leave with the young musicians of today, if they listen to the older guy like me play, play the way I do, just keep it in their heart that they can do it too. And just, you don't have to give up. If you ever give up, you'll lose. But just, just keep on trying to do it and try to fall back on some of these old style blues and the world will come in a rock with the blues and be still alive again. So that's my way of expressing about the blues. Blues ain't nothing but a good feeling. Talking about the blues plays an important role in media and new media. Celebrating our heritage, preserving blues music, sharing artists' journey, bringing diverse people together all in audio and video content. Hey guys, let me tell you how you can get official Talking About the Blues merchandise. Go to our online store at www.talkingaboutthebluesblues.com where you can purchase t-shirts, hoodies, mouse pads, mugs, and iPad cases.